Dungeons and Dragons gets really wild on the later levels, especially. But D and D in general, it allows players to get away with things. Yeah. For, even from very early on, like you have in Pathfinder, the spell tongues. It's like a fifth level spell. Mm. Right in here, in the DND is like third, right? But you can comprehend languages really from early on, anyways. Um, there are racial characters that can just fly at level one, right? Uh, mm. That's like a you know, a lot of DMs just ban that straight up, and uh, you, you can you can just like characters, a paladin can just become immune to disease, like at level three, right? Like stuff like that. I feel like you would never see in in Pathfinder is more like oh you get a plus one circumstance bonus yeah. to like disease, right? D and D. It starts just crazy, and then it mm-hmm. just keeps getting crazier as you go. So a level seventeen <laughs> character, character or uh-huh. party is so like like you, you it really does. It's, it's a challenge, right? Because oh yeah, no, that the rogue he can teleport like freely every turn, you know. So like I can't put this barrier here because the rogue is just gonna skip it. Um, I can try using my breath weapon on my dragon, but the monk and the rogue they're gonna take no damage because their dexterity is really high and they succeed and they have they basically critically succeed all the time. Uh, uh, there's a channel Knights of Last Call that talks about three goals of TTRPG systems and this is from this is on online discussions that go back years of um, and that uh, of there being game of being gamist narrativist and simulationist have you heard this I can surmise the implications of the words, but I've never heard of the concept. Okay. Yeah, something to look into and makes this conversation wants me to read into it more. Mm-hmm. But you can't f- serve all masters at the same time. And yeah. what uh, Knights of Last Call, Derek was talking about, is how Pathfinder definitely leans into gamism uh, to make a compelling tactical game. But that necessarily requires sacrificing things in the other pillars, narrativism and simulationism. And I'll say this, I I prefer Pathfinder 2E, but there's some things I miss about 1E and 3E about, you know, somebody pulling out a spell and everybody like being like, fuck, like (laughs) you just, uh, that is uh, not only did that win, but also it's just a completely zany story to tell afterward about this thing happened. Like that happens a lot with polymorph. I mean, that's a great example. Like every yes. time, I'm telling you as a DM, I hate the spell because it it ruins mm-hmm. encounters in in the sense that like it trivializes encounters. But like my players love it and they have so much fun and they talk about it for weeks. Oh, do you remember that time when I yeah. did this as T Rex? And it's just like they have so much fun and it's so engaging and they remember it. But it's yeah. also like there's so many problems with it and it ruins so much. Yeah, yeah. You can't serve all those masters at the same time. Yeah. And what, um, um, so I, I think 2e is less successful than d 5e with that kind of looking, if that's what you're looking for, the more kind of, um, uh, well, also, sorry, I'm kind of <laughs> jumping around. Um, so the idea that a spell will solve a problem is arguably more simulationist and realistic in the fantasy of your story. Um, But from a balance perspective, that has problems. Um, And I'm just saying that you can't please all masters at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, And that what I like about Pathfinder is that nothing... mm, Hmm. You don't always have to have a dungeon be everything is scaled to the party's level. You can still, if you wanted to, favor different kinds of play style because the it's engineered and you can abandon the guidelines of the system or you can do some house rules. I like the fact that you presented a, a system, that an engine that works, and if you want to tailor it it's easy to tailor it and Mm -hmm. not to say that's impossible with 5e but you does it does require a little more finesse i think yeah it's like a fucking art form man you gotta like yeah you gotta put your proficiency and get expert and master at it (laughs) yeah (laughs) and that 5e really is um delivers on a certain kind of um uh on what it 
uh, it kind of presumes, and I think this was true in 2014 when it came out, they wanted to win back the veterans who had left a D&D. And it really entrusts a, vet- a, a DM with some uh, experience mm-hmm. and um, uh, who can make rulings and not just rely on the rules and balance the system on the fly, not just adjudicate, like, sorry, and know that their, their on-the-fly ruling might have balance implications in the future. Yeah, I mean, like, I that, remember that's back hard in- to do doing a lot of like first and second edition like monster entries that i do from a channel man like you'll, you'll encounter like a fucking uh, like a pseudo dragon you know they used to be able to just sting you with their tail and put you to sleep for like a week <laughs> and that, that's just what it does that's it yeah you know? and it's like okay well you can milk it and you can get the same poison because that's that makes sense that's realistic yeah if you can do that you can milk it and I get see. the same poison and then you can use that poison why wouldn't you and so now you have a poison that can put someone to sleep for a week and like yeah mm-hmm. i mean and that's that's that veteran player that you're talking about that maybe grew up with that that wanted some what they just wanted it to just be like more crazy and yeah i mean you can i i, I like that sort of thing i like that maybe you get a spell that can there's a spell that i, I was looking at it previously a fourth level i think cleric spell uh something curse uh, it's like you can outcast curse i think it's called Mm -hmm. where you just like you can permanently just mark a person with a curse and now that person forevermore the uh, you know has like terrible penalties to their all of their charisma checks and i'm like that's so D &D and i love it (laughs) fuck that guy you know Uh what i mean like that you would find that in D &D at level two sometimes you know it's like i Uh love it one could play, have a faster, looser, um, less yeah. balanced, concerned variant of Pathfinder that I have been wondering, and I, I, I might try to do an experiment in my channel where you take mm. out level to proficiency, you remove the incapacitation trait, mm, you don't okay. scale environments to the party's level. Um, those would just be a few changes, but what anyway i I don't know if that would succeed because um on the one hand the system already gives you a a solid stable basis that you can tinker with but on the Mm -hmm. other hand maybe if you're doing that to the system maybe you're served better by another system (laughs) yeah i mean people are playing pathfinder because they like pathfinder that's the other thing too right yeah making it like it's you know i mean there are there are ways in which I feel like anyone could make anything better, right? I'm sure there are things that you can make Pathfinder uh, better. Um, but yeah, it's... No, but I, I see what you're saying. The This 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 monster, this little teeny dragon, like, fucked us. Like, we didn't expect yeah. that to happen. Um, and and it's, it's hard to complain because it's like, yeah, I mean, that's what it does. Like, if yeah. a scorpion like hits you with her sting it's like you're gonna be fucked for a few days bro like that's just yeah. kind of how it goes it's just um, that i think if i were going for that kind of world i would want yeah. the the old school like poison will kill mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> i want it yeah, to be I, meaner I, you know how i rationalize myself ronald with this stuff you know spells being so strong like if I, I can cast a spell like blindness or something, which is not how it works in fifth edition, but you know, the idea of making someone just blind permanently with a second level spell is that like the fighter can just go in and poke his eye out and do this same fucking thing. Mm. That's how I rationalize it in my head. It's like, okay, maybe I have a cripple spell that is super strong and permanent, but like the fighter, but then as a DM, I would also allow the fighter to like literally just cut someone's leg off in the middle of combat. And now it's permanent too, you know? Yeah. As long as, I guess, as long as it's equal, I guess in that way, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like 5e serves this. Um, I think I would prefer more of an old school system to have that mm-hmm. kind of style of play. And I think 5e supports it only up to maybe fifth level. Um, I think players get a number of abilities that start to, I don't know, I feel like, um, what's an example? Uh, I don't know. I, I, like a fifth edition strong spell that is just, there's no balance component to it. This is crazy. Yeah, I am. I, um, I don't know. I feel like, okay, Force Cage, yep. right, is a really strong spell. It's an I win spell. Like you win. It is. And that existed in the older editions of the system. But I think mm-hmm. 
when it's in 5e, when you combine that with flexible spell casting and um, uh, using any spell slot for any spell and yeah, oh no, and then you have silvery barbs, which is a first level spell, which okay, can that's a bullshit spell. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I, I, I sometimes allow it, sometimes I don't. It depends on how it's used. But yeah, yeah, I feel like um, it has elements. It has that. Um, those quote like magic is magic philosophy yeah. from older editions it's very strong sometimes but it, there are also mechanical ways for you to almost always succeed in it mm-hmm. in 5e that i think makes it too powerful that didn't exist before and also in old school D um the when you get to higher levels the monsters only needed to roll like a five to resist magic like spell landing a spell was hard got harder as you leveled up in old school D D. So there was mm. some things reigning in casters in the older editions. Uh yeah. you needed thirty hours to prepare all your spell slots in the morning. <laughs> things Jesus like Christ. that. I, I don't have that experience with, you know. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I mean, this is this is just what I read about. I, I actually I have, have not no played idea. much old school D&D, which sounds like something that would be totally fun to play with you, Rex. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're in the mood for something crazy like that, I mean... Like old fun. school essentials? <laughs> like, I, my, my uh, friend Tabletop Bro wants to run that. Oh, wait, do, have you heard of... There's a new um, Shadow Dark. Have you heard of Shadow Dark? No. It's it's on Kickstarter right now. It's, like, fucking blowing up. I, it, that shit could be at, like, a $2 million right now going, I think. Oh. It's made by... Um, um, arcane library she um i guess she's just very famous in like just making random D adventures and stuff and she just mm-hmm. went crazy with the kickstarter and just blowing up but it's basically yeah um like old school essentials but it's like her own version of it the idea is like playing old school D, but with a modern take i guess nice I- i'll it's look that, really at that but have you ever played old school no i haven't okay much. this I'm is, a on, fifth my, edition this is on my bucket D&D. list now <laughs> because i i've I've never really played in a campaign that's old school. Um, and yeah, just something to note. Um, I also, um, I don't know if you have any bullshit power gamers in your groups. <laughs> I used to. Um, like uh, My last group had a had the classic, you know, he, he was the, literally the, the thing I just complained to you about, about uh, having full plate armor and then the shield spell. On top yeah, of that. yeah. That was him. He just always figured out some way. So he, he was, there's this ranger subclass that God is so cancer. It's like you. Gloomstalker? <laughs> you fucking know it. You know it, Ronald. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I watch lots of videos. Thing. Like he, every single thing, you know, every, every complaint. You know that you could hear about D and D. He was he tried one of those. Uh huh. Yeah, and did did you uh, run a high level campaign with him? Yes, that was. I okay. went to level nineteen with that character, and it was okay. You know, and he, and he yeah. found ways to still make encounters. Um, it's just yeah, just you gotta do the use a lot of dexterity saving throws. Um, that's it. Like basically, like I, I would figure out like okay, so. <laughs> so that was an example because. There, I don't, I don't. There's no way to balance it, right? So that's mm. one example of something that there's like almost nothing that you can do because if you increase the attack power of monsters, then you're 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 throwing every other character on that team just out into the trash because they're not gonna yeah, block I'm, anything. Yeah. Um, you can make monsters do dexterity saving throws, but that's a really annoying like it's it's just a band aid. Like you're not really solving anything. And now suddenly no one is attacking the, the 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 guy, and it's pretty obvious that that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to, and I, you you want to make sure that you're creating scenarios that challenge him without just completely nullifying his strategy, and so it creates this issue. I there needs to be like a limit to the amount of AC that D and D allows for. There needs mm. to be like a cap of 23 or something like that, which is what I that's my own homebrew. I don't allow any AC to go higher than 23 anymore. Okay. Um, yeah. That's something that just cannot be solved. Yeah, because uh, I I think that um, yeah, this is what Pathfinder wants that guy, Gloomstalker, Madness mm-hmm. person to play at the same table as cosplay. I I like Critical Role, and you know I want I don't care how hard I hit. I just want to ride a, 
a a fey mount and mm-hmm. creature and who's just choosing cool stuff um and then at level 15 you know they, they're uh i don't know i i saw you on my stream where i i did the pathfinder speed run you were watching yeah yeah it was yeah, yeah i yeah, asked yeah. you how many times you had gone to the bathroom at that point <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i think i i told myself not to drink much water before that and so yeah um but yeah you saw that that was really quick to make and like every fight can be like that um it was just not exhausting i i think uh to run i think it would be exhausting for a dm to so try to count is, for the imbalance uh, this is also the, the thing right the system. um so once you Over once time. you get to know right like gloomstalker can very easily be banned but that but that you know that's obviously not solving the integral system problem the dnd as a con- like as a as a uh, as an addition is you just have to understand that like you're gonna ban a lot of stuff because that's just a lot of spells are just gonna be broken and if you don't like them you just ban them um but multi-classing is optional in fifth edition it's not part of the core and so that's a, a, something that gets forgotten too mm-hmm. i you it, it's within any dm's like you know purview to just say no multi-classing it's, it's not even part of the core yeah um, which is what causes mo- the vast majority of these issues um and then there's tasha tasha because they didn't just... bounce for it uh i'm sorry yeah they, no they didn't, they didn't they account didn't. for it they didn't yeah um and then there's Tasha. I mean, Tasha. Tasha is as a book. There's so many issues with Tasha's. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what they were doing. They just like buffed everything in that in that book and just added. There's a lot of issues. A lot of issues with Tasha's that I don't like. That that's the book where they decided that uh, races no longer had like specific bonuses that you could just pick whatever bonuses, which I think is something that now Pathfinder is doing with their last printing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I it's, it, it, there's a, a very select group of changes. They they kind of like shifted mentalities, I guess. Like D and D was one thing, and now mm. they were just doing something else or something more, mm. like just more, and they went bananas with it on Tasha's. Head. But uh, you know, but I don't know. I D and D is not perfect. D and D has a lot of really shitty things, and you kind of have to really understand it to to be able to 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 work with it. <clears throat> yeah, and so you know, balance. Um, if you actually use the rules, because a lot of people don't use the rules because the they they didn't actually release good balancing rules for 5th edition until Sanathar's Guide to Everything, which was, you know, years after the game came out. Um, and on top of that, the monster manual is just not balanced according to what the monsters should, like the stats right. that the monsters should have, which is like there's these two compounding problems that have created this perception. Uh, it's not even just a perception, it's true. Like the b- balancing in D&D is a fucking nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, because you just a lot of people just don't know these things. Um, they'll use the monsters as they are in the monster manual, which you know they should uh, if if everything was working correctly. But it, it's not working correctly. But you know, once you once you understand that, and you use the balancing in Sanathars, and then you modify the monsters to what they actually should be, which in most cases you have to make them stronger. Um, you end up with really satisfying encounters. And, and I'll say, man, I, I haven't had any issues in a long time with balancing, even with magic items. You just have to understand that, like, you know, if you give your player a uh, a glowing radiant sword that deals extra 2d8, which basically doubles the damage of the pal, then, like, you know, okay, he's doing twice as much damage. So you need to understand that, right? And, and react mm-hmm. accordingly with your balance. But um, I really haven't had that much issues um obviously taking into account that like one single spell could just obliterate everything just you know that's just kind of part of the drive and also maybe part of the negative of the system depending on how you see it yeah yeah i I think uh there are some play styles pathfinder 2 does not do as well as other systems uh or mm, not play styles but uh goals um and a table needs to be fully aware of its limitations and mm-hmm. what it also does and decide what they want to do I, I i like the idea of um exploring old school old school system with you i, I know one mm-hmm. other person who wants to run it and i'm not sure who else wants to play it but i want to play it but i i appreciate you ronald appreciate you talking to me for uh two hours and a half <laughs> yeah i think it was three hours 
three oh, was now. it actually oh jesus yeah no i had fun <laughs> yeah that was great very elucidating yeah well um uh but despite your you know misgivings you are liking you're, i'm you're having looking forward to the next session sounds like yeah, no, I'm I'm really having a blast because like again, like I the mechanical stuff is perfect. I love I love the crunch. I love the I love yeah. I love the difficulty. I love I, I I like that I I can just like even though it sounds like a complaint, like I love that like oh fuck I need to prep magic weapon because I need it, uh. and, and in fact like I might actually need it. Like it's hard, it's a hard game, and I so I have to think about this and I have to heal when I heal when I can and read about yeah. my abilities and prepare. Like I love that. I'll see you on Monday. Let me know if you want to have another talk about anything. And I also have you on my list of p potential old school essentials players. Is right. that a thing? Is that something you're open to? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be down for that. Cool. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much, Ronald. Sure. Appreciate you're welcome. It. All right. My pleasure. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm.